Today's video is going to be a little bit short in regards to my clip, um, but I'm here at my office, <laughs> so it's a little different, right? Um, all right, so I am on my PM break, so really quick, um, I wanted to bring up two things today. First of all, the weather right now is covered out there in fog and it's cloudy. Um, so I only have the morning clip that you just saw right now in the beginning. <laughs> Hope you liked it. I love to show that because it shows what is beneath the ridge. It shows the um, Thorpe Road, I-82, and then the river, and then Highway 97. So that shows the view between Rattlesnake Ridge and Atanum Ridge. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, all right, and uh, secondly, I wanna bring up that I am looking for um, people who are the, or know the evacuated residents from Thorpe Road, okay? I've been thinking about interviewing some of them. Um, I know I have one person who watched us, so if you are watching this, go ahead and reach out to me. You can write a comment below. Um, I'll respond with my email address, and we can go from there. We'd like to hear your story. We'd like to hear your experience um, and what's going on. Um, there was an article, and I liked it. There was an article that came out a few days ago uh, that one of the family members, sorry, one of the household of, of the evacuated residents found housing. So later this week, I want to talk about housing. I'm quite familiar with housing here in Yakima. All right, so that's it for today, but stay tuned if you want to see a clip from my geologist. And he's going to be talking about um, how water affects the slide. All right, this is Cindy with Easy C Productions. Thank you, guys. Good day, everyone. Cindy and I, thank you again for stopping by. Uh, we wanted to touch on an issue that's been commented about questions um, regarding the uh, what it would impact water may have on this uh, particular slide. Um, generally speaking, I tend to agree with the agency assessments that the groundwater is having little to no impact on the on the slide. And the reason I say that is it does seem to me looking at the records that, the, the groundwater withdrawals are pretty high and it has drawn down the water quite significantly through time um, for obvious reasons. I mean, there's a lot of farmland out here and everybody needs water. So um, in that respect, this is not to certainly not to blame anybody or anything like that. This is just pointing it out that it does appear that groundwater is significantly lower than this particular, uh, than the elevation of this particular ridge. Um, but with that in mind, I think we'll all agree that the main loss of friction in any landslide scenario, regardless of what material we're talking about, is in fact water. And in fact, we're anytime we remediate a slide like this, um, that is the first issue that is addressed. So I, I just wanted to touch on some points here, um, and these are not to suggest that you know, water's not being addressed or something's imminent because of that. But uh, what I would like to suggest is um, we need to look at these issues going forward um, in attempt to mediate future landslides of this because um, water indeed will have catastrophic consequences if not addressed prior to something like this happening. Um, I think we'll all agree that the addition of water to the system would, in fact, greatly reduce the friction. Um, and I would add to that that it would uh, actually increase the velocity of the slide. Um, layman's way of thinking of that would be any of you with kids and you know, go to the slip and slide in the summer, that kind of thing, you know you have to keep water on there to keep the velocity up, to keep the fun up so to speak. Um, no different here. Um, we get water on a certain area and on a certain slide plane, it's going to increase the velocity. Um, another factor that I think we need to add to that the more water that's infiltrated, and as we can see, we have more infiltration points than we had prior to the slide starting. So with more infiltration points, we're going to get more water, hence more weight. Um, 
And as we alluded to in the previous videos, more weight means more normal stress, which is normal to the top of the ridge here. Normal meaning perpendicular or at a right angle to the face here, or the, I'm sorry, the peak. And of course, the normal force underneath. Um, and we've pretty much established that um, the shear stress is basically in this coming down at you as you're looking at this picture. So um, just wanted to kind of allude to those two points. But another point I think that needs to be addressed here uh, and may not be so obvious is poor pressure. Now, what is poor pressure? Basically, poor pressure is the water that's held within soil and rock gaps. And as you're aware, probably, we have a lot of gaps here, most likely, underneath. Because of the cracks, because of the movement, we're creating air spaces. Um, one way to visualize that, I think I got, yes, this is basically a soil example. But I think it makes the point, basically, these white spaces, if you can imagine all those filled with water, that is going to push on these these grains in this case. Um, tighter it is, looser it is. Um, you're going to have different results depending on how much water actually gets in here. Now, how much water's in here right now in this particular slide, I have no idea. Um, but if we're going to consider water, unfortunately, yes, it's true, we're going to have to have a another variable added on to the shear stress and the normal stress and that would be the effective stress now what is the effective stress um, the layman's way I guess of thinking of that if you put a deck of cards on an inclined plane and you pushed your finger on it to keep it in place static um, that would be effective stress if you were to loosen your fingers a little bit and let cards slip out that would be a decrease in effective stress um, I do believe I have a kind of a visual on that. Yeah, um, this is kind of a neat visual about how effective stress works. And as you can see at the top, um, you can see how it pushes up on this kind of structure, if you will, but then relax it back down. Um, neat little visual on, you know, what effective stress really is. The the colored areas being pressures whether it be fluid or water um, air or water I should say um, now how do we apply that to this particular example um, well the, the presence of water in the void spaces that we just discussed is going to affect deformation behaviors it's going to affect mechanical properties stress state straight states sorry in soils and rocks doesn't matter what we're talking about um, and this will obviously induce volume change, deformation, as we alluded to, and it would decrease the shear strength. Um, that being said, um, water saturation, that takes time, and it certainly depends on the rock type. Um, but when water, um, when water is in rock, poor pressure will appear. And basically, what I'm alluding to here is that if that pressure builds up enough that it's going to start to push things, push rock, soil, everything. it's going to start to lift them, as you can see in the graphic here, um, lift them and perhaps create more favorable conditions for a slide. Um, but as we said in our card analogy, the poor pressure will push on the empty spaces and we'll, we'll lower the effective pressure resulting in a decrease of rock strengths and, and generally create situations where our discontinuity rough, roughness is decreased because we're lifting it up so ever so slightly. We don't need a lot of movement to do that. I mean, it depends you know, how much we're talking about, a lot or a little. Um, and, and, of course, we're, in order for this to work, um, this is this is going to need a lot of rain, a lot, um, which we're not really seeing right now. But I just wanted to point these things out to, again, address the questions, the comments, and just to further um, 
show examples of how water could impact this. Now, um, I did have, this is, uh, yeah, I wanted to present a slide, um, a video presentation in Polk County, Tennessee, where we are dealing with rock here, and um, the water was extensive. I mean, this was in this area at that time, I think back 2009, I think, um, you know, we're talking borderline flooding conditions here. So I just want to see the video. Um, I'll just narrate it for you because I cannot pump the audio from the video in without um, serious feedback to my microphone. So I'll just explain it to you again, just to set the stage. Uh, a lot of rain for a lot of days. Um, and we'll just roll it, and I think you'll get most of the idea just from looking at it. But yes, as you can see, it's a lot of rain. Um, this boulder fell out early in the morning. Again, they're just showing you the amount of rain um, coming through the spillways. But early in the morning, they found this, and they found the boulder across the street. They called subcontractor, Tennessee Department of Transportation, uh, called a contractor in to... Um, try to remove this via impact hammer and you'll see that at work here in a second as you can see trying to break this thing up um, you know seems like a pretty easy break it up get the highway open now this is from the Department of Tra Transportation this woman is the geologist right here the geologist from Tennessee DOT and she heard some ominous things coming from the land the uh, potential landslide which are pops thuds things like that about an hour before um, it actually happened she cleared everybody else everybody out and here's what happened mm, impressive but as you can tell, that's where that guy was using the impact hammer. And kudos to a great, uh, a great geological job there. Um, definitely saved some lives. But as you can see, the amount of rock here is, is certainly minuscule to um, what will, what we will experience at um, Rattlesnake Ridge. So, again, just wanted to touch on some. Water-related issues. Hope uh, hope that helps with the issues a little bit. Um, we, as always, we thank you for coming by, and we'll see you all again real soon. Thank you.